A very warm welcome to all of you. This is Business Today, your weekly business roundup brought to you exclusively on Channel I. And today is 27th of September 2017. We are almost done with yet another month and we are just about to wrap up the third quarter for this year. So time is flying quite fast, faster than we expected it to move. So be focused in order to achieve what you got to achieve and to make the most out of every minute. So. With that, uh, we will move on to business personality segment to start things off for tonight. Right, the business personality joining us today is a person who went against all odds to prove himself. He created his own masterpiece uh, through his uh, unique concepts and innovative ideas. So let's have a look at the introduction as we welcome our guest. In addition to being a master of science, he is also an artist with a passion for creative excellence. His passion is to innovate and create a masterpiece from virtual nothing and make it commercialized. Then, he had a dream. His dream was to become a commercial filmmaker. Against all odds and peer pressure he decided to give up a lucrative employment at that time and decided to follow his dream. In the summer of 1984, alone, he started his quest. He walked a lonely road for many a mile to achieve his dream. So doing, he created a ripple. Today the ripples of his influence have spread far and wide and touched many a sure and many a heart, inspiring others to work with passion and pride. New dimensions, new concepts now came into being, the ripples spread, thus was the birth of Kent. Kent is an exclusive company with a simple philosophy, it sought to give life to innovative ideas, this became the soul of a highly innovative company. With outstanding performance, the development of new services, new ideas and new projects has become our forte, our lifestyle. Today Kent has a group of nine companies under her umbrella. Involved in diversified business disciplines, employing closer to thousand men and women, driven with pride and passion are empowered to take this company to our mission of excellence. To those who dream and work for it, with focus and commitment, some dreams do come true. There you are, and he is Mr. Gamini Sapramado, he's a chairman of Kent Group of uh, Companies. A very good evening to you, and we warmly welcome you on board. Good evening, Nisanga. Thank you very much for having me here. Right. First of all, now, what do you like to be called as? A photographer, an artist, or an entrepreneur? This is a question uh, that a lot of people ask me. Okay. <coughs> my common answer is that inside me, my body, in my body, I'm an entrepreneur, but in my soul, my heart, I'm still a photographer. I'm an artist. Right. So, uh, 33 years ago, there were hardly any business opportunities uh, in the field of creativity. How did you convert your creative ideas into a business proposition? Can you talk about how Kent Holdings was formed over three decades ago? As you, see, as you saw a while ago, it's just that my dream, mm -hmm. and I had this desire to follow my dream. In doing so, I have given up so many things in life because I had one focus and one direction. So was born Photographic Studios. Then as time went by, when Photographics uh, started developing, we were looking at the options of developing some complementary businesses. For two reasons, A, for profit, B, to have better anchorage so that we will be so diversified, we'll be firm and strong. So was born Kent and then the other companies as we went on. Right, uh, the name Kent is always associated with the photography industry, but actually speaking, you're into many diversified sectors. Can you talk about the sectors uh, your organization is into right now? I knew that you were going to ask this question from me. So what I did was I, quickly jotted down some things, you know, <laughs> if I may read some, because often I forget. 
this would be an obvious question i know i know i know and sometimes you know i find it so difficult to tell all the things and you know the co- company some of the people in the company might not be very happy about it from digital imaging we went into software development of our own uh, products and services then we developed laser technologies then we went to photo restoration and picture framing as many people as can known in this country then trophies and awards manufacturing and exporting value added products and packaging for value added products then paving stones as you see on pavements then of course our latest business is tourism right uh. it's a lot it's a lot Okay so you call Kent as an exclusive company with a simple philosophy can you explain and elaborate on this uh, statement and is our, our our philosophy is very very simple we keep our ear to the ground mm. and we observe what's happening in the marketplace and in the society then we will assess what the society requires and we will put that on to our sort analysis and check with our strengths and weaknesses and if there is a product or a service that the society requires we will after our due diligence we will start developing that for mutual benefits and put it to society as i said i emphasize on mutual benefit society benefit we benefit All right and uh, something unique we see in your portfolio is that you have many niche markets within the organization so how do you identify these market segments and uh, the requirements of these segments and cater to them accordingly be honest it's the fear of competition and the fear of people copying us okay. so when you go to a niche market and develop in that niche market mm-hmm. you work at a segment of people mm-hmm. so the it's not only the money that needs to run it but you got to have that wisdom and you're also heart and soul in the business so, so unless somebody wants to get to where we are right we will uh, go into the specific niche markets and develop products and services in these niche markets uh, so that they can thrive for better profits Okay and uh, you have introduced some breathtaking creations into the market uh, over the past 33 years uh, can you talk about those innovative products that you've introduced uh, over the years now this is another question i know that you're going to ask me okay i knew you were going to ask that question to be specific and also to see that i will give the right answer mm-hmm. i again jotted down some things if you don't mind i yes, can probably yes definitely yes see 33 years is a long time period for you to remember <laughs> in the year of 1989 kent invent, invented a product called duragard mm-hmm. and ply mount at that time it became a household name especially in the uh, photo restoration industry then we did this product to protect the photo emulsions mm-hmm. then in the ni- in the year of 1993 Kent introduced insect proof and water repellent water resistant professional picture framing system in the year of 1994 Kent introduced the large format digital printing to Sri Lanka what you see all over now mm-hmm. was introduced by Kent mm-hmm. way back in 1994 digital printing mm-hmm. in the year of 1999 Kent commenced stained glass manufacturing restoration of hundreds of years old cathedral tops like in the churches now those stained glasses are over 100 years old or 200 years old they are brittle so we have ventured into a project where we manufactured those stained glass the same quality and matched and installed and kent started that then in the year of 2000 we developed the packaging industry where we produce high end piano finish wooden packaging for export of value added products i am proud to say that kent received the award the world award and the asia award mm-hmm. consecutively for 3 years Great. and still we have that position way back in 
in way back in 2004 me a kent mm-hmm. product mm-hmm. was awarded the national platinum award for the sri lankan entrepreneur of the year by the federation of chambers of commerce of industries in sri lanka in the year of 2010 kent galleries invented the lifetime restoration of wedding bridal flower bouquets we preserve it we make the bouquet to look like exactly or closer to what it was in the wedding day for lifetime then in the year of 2015 kent trophies and awards company was commenced and then we developed a product called nano plating so that you don't have to go in for dangerous chemicals using dangerous chemicals for plating and it's a more chemistry based uh, safer method of course in 2016 kent innovated commenced lace engraving on precious metal and jewelry nobody would want to touch with jewelry but we ventured into a product into a system by using high tech laser so that we can engrave on jewelry with responsibility so this is pretty much what we are yes so uh, fantastic <laughs> actually today you are a very very successful person so to get to this position when you look back you would have uh, definitely had some difficult times so what were the greatest obstacles you had uh, in this journey and how did you face them obstacles that's our middle name mm-hmm. i would have i would probably name three of them first one is the design piracy then trained employees leaving our country to go and work for other countries leaving us behind then the third the most pathetic thing is that unavailability of people emplo- employable people there are educated people but they are not employable so this is these are the major issues that we have uh, encountered but of course we take people in and we train them we guide them we give them hands on training and we see that they go to the next level of the company with us mm-hmm. okay so can you also talk a little bit about your global presence and how well you have established your name in the international market and it's like this is how it happened you know as we grew up we had this tendency to give most of our production capacities to big boys big companies big suppliers big big buyers at one stage we realized that we were forgetting the smaller guys and when we were forgetting the smaller guys the risk was becoming greater so at that point of time the company decided to work with uh, smaller buyers worldwide so today there are five countries countries established and represented in five countries where we export a thing called bulk brick bulk so any uh, small buyer can place an order and his order will go together in a bulk and it's bulk broken in that country and distribute to the respective person and in doing so what we did was i must tell you we have again spread our risk right it's dangerous to give so much of capacity to one big guy so we have spread our risk great and you firmly believe in six commandments for entrepreneurs what are those and why do you believe in them so much this i don't have to look it's all over me it is very simple as simple as kent <coughs> i believe in where i was yesterday where am i today where do i want to be tomorrow is my head <coughs> turned towards the direction that i want to be tomorrow when will i go to where i want to go tomorrow and how will i go there so those are my six commandments like every person should have some kind of conduct some kind of code of ethics mm-hmm. and this is my code of ethics right and uh, over the past 3 decades the market behavior and lifestyles have changed immensely so how did you um, evolve with time and uh, your products how did you keep in line with the changes in the market <coughs> behavior continuous improvement of machinery technology knowledge 
training of staff that's a huge human resource <coughs> then also look at and study the work study to see how best we can do or perform the same function in a more productive manner the efficiencies gaining efficiencies and uh, also to see how productive we can become continuous dialogue continuous value addition okay so technology uh, plays a vital role in today's it business does. context so yes. how important is technology for you it is quite it's quite it's business. quite quite in fact um, some of our machinery are working to about 60-70% of uh, their capacities, especially on their software capacities. So we have a division where we develop the software, especially to run our own machinery and equipment. And uh, <clears throat> like I said before, it is so important that one follows the trend and keep an eye on the direction that you are going so that you can continuously upgrade your, upgrade your product. All right, and my final question to you is 33 years ago, uh, business prospects for creative industry was not so attractive, but today it is a total different arena. So what is your advice to all those with <coughs> creative skills? What should they do to take it uh, forward and move on to the next level? From a perspective of a veteran, I would like to hear from have you. Have the courage, have the courage to discover yourself. Mm -hmm. Discover yourself. Find out who you are. Find out what your aspirations are. Whom would you want to become? And then continuous upgrading of yourself. Don't fear fall. Don't fear failure. Have developed the wisdom to get up and run every time you fall. Most importantly, be persistent. Practice. Go on and never say die. Never say die. Right, so great piece of advice uh, coming from a very successful individual. Thank you very much for being with us. It was indeed lovely having you with us today. Thank you, Nisanga. Thank you very much for having me here. Right, with thank that, you very much. right, thank you so much and all the very best to you. you. With that, uh, we will move on to a short commercial break and we will be back with you with more updates. Stay around. Welcome back to Business Today and now it is time for us to check out on what is happening in the Colombo Stock Exchange. Let's move on to the stock market segment. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes, as usual, we have uh, Shiraj Obeseker from Columbus Stock Exchange joining us to give a brief update on what's going on at CSC. Let's connect with Shiraj. Good evening. Um, let me start with this week's performance. Uh, the market ended on a positive territory last week with the benchmark call share price index making 0.4 percentage gain during the week to close at 6,427 points, while the S&P SL20 index made a 0.3 percentage gain to close at 3,692 points. Taking a look at trading volumes for the week, uh, the market turnover was recorded at Rs 4.4 billion. The best performing shares for the week were PC Pharma, SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Lanka Cement, Adam Investments and Hunas Falls. A quick comparison of how the stock market has done so far uh, into 2017 by looking at some key indicators. Uh, when looking at the indices compared to how they stood at the start of the year, the All Share Price Index has made an increase of 3.07% and the S&P SL20 Index has made an improvement of 5.03% so far this year. Foreign investments maintaining a net buying position is something that we've talked about quite a lot on the show so far this year and that situation has continued to sustain with the net foreign inflow figure as of today standing at 16.9 billion rupees in the secondary market and rupees 29.5 billion uh, when you consider the primary and secondary market both. The daily turnover average also has improved in 2017 to rupees 916 million, up from rupees 737 million recorded for 2016. 
moving on to some other news of events conducted by the stock exchange uh, the kotas well the pulu nagare nagareta series organized by the cac and scc to create an awareness on the stock market around the country continues this weekend in gaul on saturday the 30th at the lighthouse hotel the event is a great opportunity for those staying in and around gaul to learn about and get familiar with stock market investments and you will also have the opportunity to meet with stock brokers and unit trust representatives and the event will really give you a all round update on what you need to consider when investing this is the fifth event and follows forums in nigambo colombo jaffna and kandy which have been well received so more details could be obtained by accessing the csc website at www.csc.lk winding up with some news on a foreign investor focused event that we are also having next month uh, policy and business leaders from sri lanka including the governor of the central bank and lead other leaders from the sri lankan capital market are set to participate at the invest sri lanka capital market forum organized by the csc and scc new york on the 16th of october uh, as i mentioned earlier the event this year is organized on the back of a considerable level of foreign activity in the sri lankan stock market and we expect to attract leading us based institutional institutional investors to make a pitch for sri lanka in new york uh, that does wind up the update we have from the stock exchange for this week thank you and have a good night right thank you sharaj for the update and with that we are ready to move on to our final segment for today and we have a hot favorite topic for discussion today uh, as you're well aware the a uh, new inland revenue act was passed uh, in parliament recently there's so much of talk uh, in the market about this new act at the same time there's so much that we do not know about what's in it so let's clear all your doubts as we have uh, mr suresh pereira he is a principal tax and regulatory of kpmg a very good evening to you good evening sanjay right so to start things off uh, can you give a brief overview of the tax system of the country well nisanga sri lanka has a fascinating web of taxes mm -hmm. we have direct taxes we have indirect taxes and then we have the import levies so we have income tax economic service charge vat nbt e, uh, stamp duty and then entertainment levy uh, tourism development levy betting and gaming levy and if you count all these taxes i think we have something in between 20 to 30 taxes and it's it's quite large number of uh, taxes that we have and if i speak a little bit more about the income tax we have about say roughly around 7 700000 uh, individuals paying taxes uh, both pay and the individuals who are filing their tax returns and there are about 47000 corporates uh, paying taxes in sri lanka but when you say tax system i think we have to uh, when you start to evaluate the tax system there are uh, four things that we look at what is the object of a tax system the primary object of a tax system is to raise the revenue and this is what we call the revenue purpose and is some tax system uh, generating sufficient revenue to the state now as we all know tax to gdp ratio of sri lanka is around it's hovering around 12 11 and it's not quite enough and even you look at uh, the income tax to gdp it's about 2.2 so it clearly indicates that sri lankan tax system is not generating sufficient revenue to the state now because of that we have to rely on debt uh, and the second object of a tax system is to uh, redistribute the income that means uh, do the job of the robin hood that is to ensure that is to bridge the gap between the rich and the poor uh, so is our tax system addressing that issue now recently the world bank uh, issued a report where they pointed out that in sri lanka almost 40% of the tax payers uh, 40% of the population uh, earn only 225 rupees per person per day and that indicates that the tax system is not carrying out the redistribution function also yes. and the third object of a tax system is to reprice reprice uh, repricing okay the meaning of repricing is that 
to use the tax as a tool to encourage or discourage certain industries. Now that object of course is being fulfilled uh, one can say. Now we'll take the case of uh, the corporate uh, standard tax rate, it's 28%. And to encourage certain industries, let's say exports, the agriculture, we have, a, we have always had a concessionary tax rate. Currently it's 12%, uh, it's going up to 14%, but still it's below, very, very much below the standard at 28%. And to discourage the sin industries, that's uh, tobacco, alcohol, uh, etc., we find there's a higher tax rate of 40%. Uh, and then the fourth object of a tax system is the representation. That means elected representatives uh, must be accountable for proper utilization of the taxes collected. Okay. Now that's what we call, for that there should be transparency in the system. Right. And when taxpayers see that their taxes are being put to good use, okay. then people get encouraged to pay more taxes. Now that's a very vital aspect because that will go on to ensure there's voluntary compliance. Right. Now. So that's basically the right. good and bad about the tax right. system in Sri Lanka. Okay, so now coming to our main area of concern, the new uh, Inland Revenue Act will be effective from 1st of April 2018. What are your views on this new act? Correct. As you rightly pointed out, basically it's coming to effect from uh, 1st of April. I think uh, that itself is a consolation because uh, earlier there was, uh, how do you say, view that it will come to if I come, uh, come into it immediately, immediately so it's not happening so we have a period of roughly about six months to get uh, to right. familiarize ourselves right? now as I pointed out earlier uh, Sri Lankan tax system is not perfect there's a uh, lot of uh, room for improvement and there is a there is a need for change so it's uh, we, we all hope that this uh, new Inland Revenue Act will bring that change. So what's that uh, change? Basically the new act has been introduced with the intention of simplifying the tax system and to uh, ensure that sufficient uh, income tax will be collected. Now from the point of view of the increasing the income tax, uh, well in the market uh, there are different views. Some people think that okay this may increase the revenue and at the same time there is a view that uh, this may not uh, do that function. So we have to wait and see exactly what will happen. But uh, from my, my personal view is uh, due to uh, how do I say uh, the 12% tax rate going up to 14% and certain sectors uh, like exports, specifically the service sector, service exporters coming into start paying taxes and elimination of the exemptions may result in overall uh, increase of the uh, income tax collection. Right, and now uh, the key question of this discussion is uh, many of us are not really aware of what uh, what is actually in this new Inland Revenue uh, Act. So what are the salient features in this that affects the general public? Okay, so when you say general public, uh, it's upon the point of view of uh, a normal, say a sole yes. proprietor, yes. normal yes. person. The salient features. Yes, say the tax free allowance of 5 lakhs is not changing, it's the same. But at the same time we find uh, the tax labs, earlier so the first 500,000 was exempt from income tax and the next 500,000 was subject to tax at 8%, 4% and then 4, 8%, 12%, uh, up to 24% in case of a uh, normal sole proprietor. So the slabs are always 5 lakhs. Now that slabs are being increased to 6 lakhs. So because of that, uh, from that category, there will be uh, there will be a less amount of uh, taxes collected. So it, there, there may be relief for that category. Okay. But at the same time, other categories like take the case of employees, mm -hmm. employees who are in the mercantile sector and who are earning high salaries may will be will be contributing more to the department because the highest tax uh, slab of 16% is going up to 24%. 24%. But at the same time, uh, it's quite a uh, price hike. Yes, like. yes. But at the same time, uh, how to say, mid-level and the low-end uh, uh, employees will be getting relief uh, under this system. So you can see that 
this system ensures that or it reflects a, uh, as a, the trend of how to say it, it promotes the equity yeah. in other words basically it uh, ensures that broad shoulders will uh, bear more burden equity in taxation that's what uh, we call so in in addition to that um, say filing of the tax return uh, the date of final tax return in case of individuals it remains 30th november but at the same time if you fail to fi file the tax return on the due date early on the due date if you fail if you do if you fail to file the tax return the penalty maximum penalty was 50000 now that's going up to 400000 from 50000 50000 400000 that is if you do not pay taxes if no, not do not pay taxes if you fail to file the return ah oh, tax returns okay Sorry. All right. So, what is the impact on EPF and ETF with this? Okay, I think uh, EPF ETF. There's no change. The status quo remains. In other words, if you take the case of uh, EPF, the both capital and the uh, interest uh, is uh, exempt from income tax. And in case of ETF, uh, the investment income, that is the interest, uh, remains uh, exempt. So, it's the status quo is remaining. Right, and uh, if you concentrate on different segments uh, like uh, employees, professionals, SMEs, exporters, what is the impact on them? Okay, professionals. Very briefly. Yes, uh, in case of professionals, of course, uh, right now due to a uh, big uh, slab of 24% in practice, most of the professionals who are in practice are paying only at the rate of 12%. The highest slab is 12. That 12 now will go up to 24. So, professionals who are earning high income will be contributing uh, more to the uh, state. In other words, the beneficial status, status currently employed by the currently enjoyed by the professionals uh, are going out, and they are coming to the same uh, standard as the normal other other people, individuals. So. Uh Right. With that, actually, this is quite a broad uh, subject. Uh, we will need many hours to go into a detailed discussion, but unfortunately, we got to wind up. So thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we really appreciate your presence today. Thank you. Right. With that, uh, we will wind up for today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we will see you next week, same time on Channel I. Take care and good night.